Hi, this is Gary Kay. We're here at Infocom 2019. I'm here with Kevin O'Connor, uh, Director of Sales uh, for Sony Corporation, right? That's correct, yeah, D sales and marketing. Sales and marketing for Sony Corporation, uh, apologies. Um, and we're standing in front of something that's new. I mean, uh, CLED, this is in a vertical configuration. Yeah, we've uh, this year we decided uh, one of the verticals that we've had a lot of success in is the corporate vertical. So we wanted to try and emulate a corporate lobby space here, and we thought we'd try to do it a little bit different. Outside of having our big 32-foot by by 18-foot wall, we decided to put it in, in, into a portrait mode. And so this one's about 15 foot by about nine feet, I think, wide. I think is what it is. Yeah, and it's in a and it's in a portrait configuration. And of course, the CLED is a micro LED technology. For those of you who don't know about it, you should go to Sony.com and read about it because it's stunning imagery. I mean, it, it, what's amazing? I was talking offline before we started. To our videographer, the one thing that's interesting about this is when usually you see dark concert scenes, there's a lot of noise. I mean, it's it's like you're actually standing off the stage. So what we, you know, you mentioned micro LED, and we like to say we're the micro LED because ours is about a hundred times smaller than everything else. But what that allows us to do is the actual surface area of that wall is 99.9% .9 black, and that's why we get those contrasts, the million to one contrast ratio that you see. So the blacks really are black. It just a bunch of needle points in there that that's where the lights coming out of the other thing we do is we embed it the, the, uh, the light element inside inside of the substrate that allows us to take that light path that you typically is very narrow with the LED and spread it so we get 179.9 degree viewing angles left right top bottom speaking of uh, you said it's 100 times smaller than anyone else's and 99.9% .9 black how small are they? Like, can you give us a physical comparison? I, I, it's something smaller than like half the width of a human hair or something so like that, right? There's a couple of things, yeah. It's, it's very, very tiny. The actual light elements themselves are very tiny. The other thing that we do, it's a little bit different, is when we install it, we actually use a, a, a special jig. Typically with LEDs, you know, sometimes they'll use a rubber mallet to put them in and knock them yeah. into place. With us, yeah. we don't do that. We've actually got microscopic cameras that are measuring X, Y, and Z axis. So that the, that's why it appears so seamless. We get it down to about 0.3 microns of tolerance between each display unit. So it just looks like one flat wall. We can't, and it, honestly, it doesn't have to be flat. We can curve it. Right. Um, after you get to about seven degrees, you start getting a little bit of reflection. So we'd like to keep it below seven degrees on that curve. But again, you get that seamless nature to it all. We went around and shot individual videos at the Sony booth, and so you can see everything they launched here at Infocom at raypubs.com slash infocom2019. One of the coolest things that I geek out on is spatial audio, the spatial audio technology, which I think you're calling VR audio or something like that. It's mind-boggling to me, but the applications for this are, there's, I, I, I keep thinking of more applications every time I think of the product. It's one of those cool, cool products that we, we just love bringing out, seeing what kind of you know, response we get to it. it. It's, you know, you're right. It, it's got a number of different things that it can do. From an operational standpoint, you could, you can partition audio. So as, as we're walking in to see an exhibit, I can hear it in Spanish, you can hear it in English, somebody else can hear it in Japanese. But I think what's really cool about it, and as it relates to maybe amusement parks or museums, is, is not so much directional audio, but placing audio. So like if I wanted to put a bird chirping on your, on your shoulder, chirp, 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 and you're not thinking it's not coming from this direction, you actually think you got a bird chirping on your shoulder. And you could also control it real time. So if, if we are, you know, say, walking into some sort of attraction at an amusement park, if I'm the operator, I can follow somebody with sound real time on a tablet. So that sound can be following wherever they go inside the room. And they're turning around thinking, oh God, someone's talking to me behind my back, and that's really just not happening. See, there's another application I haven't even thought about. So in that case, you're sort of immersing themselves exactly. in an environment or an experience that they wouldn't normally have. And that's how far we've come with digital audio, is that we can sort of play with the acoustics and the, the sound and marry the two together and send audio anywhere. Exactly. I think, you know, when people think of VR, virtual reality, we almost always associate it with what we see. Right. But there, exactly, that element is gone with the audio. You, audio just enhances everything. It really gives that immersive feel to it all. Yeah, it, you you have to go check the videos that we shot on this, uh, both the CLED and the spatial audio product. In addition to everything else, they, uh, they Sony had a very busy section of their booth. Has been the Vis Vision Exchange product, which is obviously aimed at higher education. Um, you've got the digital signage products, very popular, obviously. 
Um, anything that uh, anything else that you found that people are kind of gravitating to as they come into your booth? I think for us as a company, what, one of the things we're trying to do is, you know, we've always been a producer of, of, of product. And I think what you see with Sony's booth this year is, is an evolution. And we started it doing it about three years ago, where it's not so much about the product, but it's about solutions now. Adapting product to fit into a solution, whether it's in a corporate environment, an educational environment, or an entertainment environment, but providing using our product and our knowledge from a product standpoint as the backbone to it all, but understanding what a pain point is in, at a, with an educator or in a corporate facility, and then addressing that as a, you know, whether it's with product, whether it's with software, whether it's with services, something that we're able to do that we haven't been able to do before. I mean, if you look around, we've got, you know, yes, gone are the days where you've got, you know, 40 projectors showing up on, 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 you know, with screens everywhere. Now we're really talking more about solutions. Yeah, and you put environments together exactly. here in the booth. And uh, you can got to get a good feel for it by watching the videos that we shot at rayhubs.com slash infocom2019. Kevin, thank you very much thank today. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining that. me. The show just opened for day three. We got a lot more to cover. All of our coverage at Ray Pubs. Uh, click on the infocom link. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.